Hey, my name is Ryan Serhant, and this is how I spent my first million dollars. I know there's a lot of money here right now, but it wasn't always that way. And the money that we're gonna be talking about today was made mostly from real estate brokerage, helping people buy and sell homes in New York City, Florida, the Hamptons, and high net worth markets. I've been in the real estate business for uh, almost 15 years now in New York City. The first 12 years, I was just a regular real estate agent running around. The last couple years, I have run my own firm. I'm the CEO and founder of Sirhant, the greatest real estate firm in the history of the known universe. And before that, I definitely wasn't making millions of dollars. I was uh, a hand model. That paid 150 bucks an hour. That was good. I was on a soap opera, Dr. Evan Walsh IV. Got killed off of that one. Random like modeling things. I, I modeled for FUBU. I did a lot of stuff for free, a lot of free work. But before we talk about the first million, let's talk about the first dollar. My first job actually was uh, a job with my little brother. I was 10 years old, he was seven years old. We lived outside Boston and my parents had kind of bought this old farmhouse that we moved into, it was so old. Everything was like overgrown trees all over the place. And so there were landscapers um, that were cutting down all the old growth to like make yards and everything for our house. I remember going to the grocery store with my mom and I remember seeing um, chopped firewood like at the grocery store for sale. People actually buy firewood and never like put two and two together. I was thinking back to our house and all the wood that was being like chopped down. It's like, what's, what's happening to all that wood? What if I chopped it and I sold firewood? I started doing all the math and I was like, how much is a cord of wood? How much would that sell for? And lo and behold, I created Jack Ryan Wood. Put an ad in the newspaper and started getting calls. And I did one sale. It was awful, it was so hard. I had no idea how much a cord of wood actually was. It took up multiple pickup trucks, it took forever, it, we had a bad, it was just a completely disaster and, and I quit after the first day. So my first million dollars um, took me a long time to get to. It's not like I, I built a company and then sold it for millions of dollars. And it's not like anyone early in my career actually gave me a check for a million dollars. I remember every deal I ever did. If I rented an apartment for $1,000 a month, I'd make 500 bucks, of which a good portion still goes to taxes and expenses and food and rent and getting around on the subway and everything else. So in order to survive in New York City, I mean, you have to make so much money just to be able to break even and just live here. And so my immediate motivation early on in my career was make enough money that after tax, I can still live in New York City and pay rent and go out to dinner a couple times a month and maybe go see a movie and not be stressed about money. The first thing that I spent money on, because I hated getting around New York City, cabs were expensive, there was no Ubers at that time, and going in and out of the subway, there was no cell service down there, and I'd get up, it'd be frustrated, you'd get stuck on a train, there'd be a sick passenger or whatever's going on, was I got an Escalade and I got a full-time driver an employee that was just gonna drive me around all day long so I could go from my home office to my mobile office to my office office without having to think about transportation. But I didn't buy the Escalade. What do you think, I'm crazy? No, these cars, they go out of style every seven months. So I leased the first one, so now I add it to my monthly payments, and I get a new Escalade every single year because they keep changing it and making it better. Now I have a full sunroof, so it's not pitch black in the winter in New York City at 2 p.m. in the back seat. And then I got my first employee. Right? And that's, that's salary, plus benefits, plus payroll tax, and everything else that gets wrapped into having an actual employee. And then out of every dollar I make, um, especially early on in my career, right, I followed the one-third, one-third, one-third rule, which is the first 33% of every check you put away for taxes. Because when you're an independent contractor like I am, you're a salesperson, all of your business expenses get deducted from your gross income Okay, and then you're paying tax on what the net profit is. And in our business, we spend so much money. Marketing expenses, salaries, everything, everything. It's an obscene amount of money to spend to build business, but scared money don't make money, so you gotta spend it. The second third goes to savings, right? You gotta save, you gotta be putting money away, otherwise you're gonna wake up in 10 years and say, oh my God, I still live paycheck to paycheck. And the other third is spending on life, right? Rent, food, drivers. So a third, a third, a third, but I guess I would take this. Unfortunately, let's take this and this, right? This is now taxes. So thank you so much for working so hard. 
tax, right? And then we got this, all right, here we go. This is now savings. So we're gonna ideally put this away. Don't touch it, invest it in safe investments. Nothing stupid like an S&P index fund, just safe. Safe, basically a bank account, but you're earning actual higher interest over time. Okay, so you're not just keeping it in savings. And then this, oh, perfect, boom. This is what you're left with. You make a million dollars, this you don't get to touch. This is what you get. So there's not, not as much as you think. So then from what I'm left with, with my first million dollars, uh, this is my car and driver. Uh, this is uh, new suits because you have to look good, right? You have to look good, you have to feel good. I am a walking first impression. Now I have this huge building in Soho, this amazing office, every, everything is great. But when I first started making money, I wasn't bringing people to my office and I didn't want to meet them in Starbucks either. So I had to always refresh my outfit so that I looked the part, right? Big money energy, be future you. Future Ryan makes millions of dollars and he always looks successful. Now I built an entire townhouse and I designed the entire second floor of the townhouse around a closet because I have like almost a hundred suits. So there you go, there's that. My first big purchase was I didn't have my own car. So I, I leased the Escalade, but that was really my work car. But then to like get to my parents' place, to go out east, Long Island, anything, get around the city, I didn't have my, my own car. Um, and so actually, I don't know if anyone knows this, my first car that I ever got, it's probably like one, two, three, maybe it's four of these, um, was a Mercedes SMG 550 convertible. Is that a car? Is that what it was called? I don't really know cars that well. It was small, it was black with red leather seats and it went so fast. Had it for less than a year and I just wasn't using it anymore. Uh, and so I sold it, but yeah, I don't think I made, I think I actually lost money when I sold it. Fucking cars, dude, I like, whatever. Now I'm left with this, 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 look, all of everything's gone. Everything's just gone. Then all, you know what, honestly, all of this, all of this then went to the down payment on my first apartment. Because as a real estate salesperson, it didn't make sense to me that I didn't actually own my own home. I was living in a tiny little rental apartment. I was totally fine just having a mattress on the floor because I was a big saver, right? I like to, I like to save. I wanna save because I know what it's like to be broke in New York City. I know what it's like to cry on the subway because your credit card gets declined and I never, ever, ever, ever am gonna go back to that position for the rest of my life. So I gotta put money away, gotta make sure you pay your taxes, have some nice things. But to be able to talk to people about buying multi-million dollar homes I needed to also have a multi-million dollar home. It's like going to the gym. Are you gonna pick the personal trainer who looks like they work out every day or are you gonna pick the personal trainer who looks like they work out at McDonald's every day? Right, you're gonna pick the one who probably looks like they know what they're doing. Same thing in our business. If you're selling something, you have to also own the thing that you sell. You gotta talk from a place of experience. So I found a penthouse in Soho not what I was looking for. My budget was like one to $1.5 million. I was gonna get like a nice two bedroom, maybe fix it up, like nice and affordable. And then I was selling this building and the penthouse was asking $4 million. And I was like, I should probably just buy this. Can I afford it? I have no idea. But if I overthink it, then it'll never make sense. Scared the shit out of myself, put the down payment on that place, paid $3.7 million for it. My first apartment, three bedroom, home office, two outdoor spaces. Probably one of the best real estate investments I've actually made um, because it scared the hell out of me and that thing is appreciated like a beast. So that's it. That's, and then I had to go out and make more money because now all my first million dollars is gone. So that's the first million dollars. Now my life is basically, okay, personal expenses like this, all of this gets reinvested back. Actually, probably most of this plus all of this, save like a little bit, Taxes are now even like more, fucking tax, god damn it. Put that over there. This all gets reinvested back into the business. Money mindset for me is a couple things. I think long-term about money, not short-term. I'm always thinking about what this is gonna do for me in one year because I'm gonna be Ryan in one year before I know it. So how can I use this to help him out? Not what can I go and buy today, 
I don't buy fancy stuff anymore because it just doesn't do anything for me. I'm trying to build something much, 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 much bigger. So long-term view of money, not a short-term view of money. My one-third, one-third, one-third rule so that you're saving and building. And then remember, money compounds. You can't be scared of it. It's a tool. It is a resource to make more money. So reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. That's it. That's the first million. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe. Hopefully this was useful.